You know, in a very technical sense, this is my fourth $1 boat. <laughs> I did it with Kishmal, and then um, technically I got both of those tornadoes for a dollar. So um, technically, it's my second $1 boat, and I've had two 50 cent boats. But um, one thing you really need to do with a $1 boat is everything. Um, but also, you when you need to rip out all the electrical almost always, right? It's the electrical is always a, a bit of a nightmare, and being able to save some of it really will um, make your job a lot less. In my case, I wasn't able to. Um, I made the call to tear it all out. The one that you really want to keep, the circuits that you really want to keep, is like everything that goes up the mass, and then like all of the lighting circuits. The lighting circuits run freaking everywhere. So in this episode, we're going to use some of Ryan's pot lights that he brought out while he was visiting, and we're going to install them on the boat. Look at these things. I got a lot of these. Thank you, Ryan. You're the best. All right, let's get to it. All right, Lee, what are these fittings that you're putting on? What are these called? Oh, these are just, these are Molex connectors. They just Molex? Came, came with the other tie under the light, so okay. I figured we may as well use them. There um, you go. And you, is this normally what you'd go for? Probably not. I normally use a watertight connector yeah but you're in the cabin of the boat and we'll, we'll put a heat shrink over the top of them right it just lets you easily change the lamp if you ever have to you know? right so. and notoriously my boat definitely doesn't leak so i no, for sure will never not. have problems with that <laughs> ever in the future never once no no i doubt it yeah, 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 yeah wicked yeah. all right wicked we'll get a couple lights in today that's so sick yeah, a couple plans So much brighter. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. I oh, love the so color temperature. It's so nice. I love the um, just the visual acuity of the mess on the bench. It's yeah, it really looks, it really makes it shine. I love that. Yeah. All right, so I've got these foam insulation boards. They're just kind of pressed in there right now, and I've started cutting holes and running wires to install these pot lights. We're just going to temporarily slot them into all of these so at least I have some working light and I can extend the working hours and usability of my boat a little bit more. Um, and they're kind of set in the right spots so that I can tweak it and test it and uh, maybe get to using you know some other stuff in other places and, and wire everything up before I finally finish these walls and finish all the insulation and everything. All right, so powering the lights and the power tools and charging all the batteries are just these two Renogy Shadow Flux solar panels. Yeah, just two panels. I've gone from uh, <laughs> over 6,000 watts of solar on my last boat to now under 400 watts, and it's still keeping up, and that's because of the shadow flux nature of these. Now, I have masts and rigging that cause partial shading, as most sailboats do, and that's where these panels really come into their own. You're already getting the N-type cells, you're already getting 25% efficiency, which is some of the best out there. But on top of that, you're also getting 16 bars. If you see all these metal bars going through here, these bars allow for the solar energy, the electrons getting in there to find more pathways out to the wires. So when there's shade and some of these cells are starting to get blocked off, you're still reaching that 36 volts of VOC and it's uh, still gonna hit your voltage range for your charge controller. So even though these two cells just barely make it into my voltage, my operating voltage of my charge controller, I'm able to charge all the time, no matter whether there's a mast covering, you know, a full quarter, full half of the panel, I'm still getting power into it. And uh, that's mainly because of these 16 bars of extra travel, the end type for the high efficiency, and of course, it's a pretty low footprint, so I'm going to be able to fit six of these on top of this pilot house. So I'm really excited. If you guys are interested, please check out the link in the description. Thank you so much to Renogy, as always, for sponsoring this build. Let's get back to it. 
Well, it's been really warm lately, but um, that doesn't mean that winter's not coming. So I really need to focus some time and energy into the hydronic loop, get the heat exchangers back in here and not leaking. And to help me do that, I've got Joel here today. Joel, say hi to the crew. Hello. All right, Joel is a career plumber slash fix a guy slash boat owner. He's the exact right person to help me out with this. I am notoriously freaking awful with plumbing. So um, yeah, he likes to watch me struggle on my YouTube channel and then uh, come in and tell me everything I did wrong. So today, Joel's gonna tell me everything I did wrong and then we're gonna do it right. Yeah, so then, and then that's gonna be on the main loop all the time. No, I'm not sure. I mean, now's the time to change it if that was the case. A different one for your heating, eh? for hot water heating. Great, is there rats in here? Those fittings are very, very odd feeling. From New Line? Those are from New Line and this is from Vivor. No, I get it. So that's going to be the Vivor problem. That's, that's not as perfect as Yeah, the, that's what I'm thinking. Sure. It just, it feels to me like these are almost straight cut. And then the, the these are NPT and tapered. Yeah. And that's probably where the problems are coming from. So and you, to solve that problem, we're using Great White Pipe Joint Compound with PTFE. AKA Pipe Dope. Pipe Dope. There you go. That's what the pipes are getting high on. It's pipe yeah, dope. Well, oh, you don't hold back, eh? Put a leverage on there. Power fist, eh? It's for getting power fisted. Joel's, are you struggling? Struggling to understand. Yes, I am. What am I doing? Why did, I, why did I make it so complicated? I have no idea. I'm sure it, um, in the great scheme of things, it's going to be pretty cool, but it's really complicated for three different heating systems. I'm a really big like systems nerd. <laughs> so when I... When I get the idea, but you don't have any plans. I, well, they're all in my Just head. In your head. So I think maybe the next part of this episode will be me drawing out this loop so that um, people can actually understand what's going on. What you want it to do? Yeah. The idea is that I, I have no wasted energy. I'd like to be able to, like thermal energy is so important up here in Canada for heating, and that is a, a massive amount of actual energy being used up to heat our spaces and so since i have a generator and an engine and a diesel heater i wanted to get every last bit of heat i could out of them without letting anything waste and as a result i've built an incredibly complicated system <laughs> because all of the little safety features and extra valves and all this stuff it just adds up real quick yeah well we got a parts list and there's a start yeah how many, how many times do you go to the parts store when you're doing a plumbing job there? It's nice here at Silver Bay because everything's right handy. Yeah, it's not so bad? Yeah, it's all on the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, but we love it. Yeah. What's well, you got to do this system out of a hardware store. Okay, so I just parked the boat next to the hardware store, <laughs> and I should be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so to break this all down, we have Simon's super confusing heating loop. And I thought this was quite simple, but as it turns out, it's getting very, very complicated. So we're just gonna deal with the hydronic loop. Each one of these heat exchangers will also have a in and out for their respective things. So the generator will have the coolant from the generator going through it. The engine will have the coolant from the engine going through it. And the hot water will have water going through it to heat the water. So we're gonna start at the diesel heater. So from the diesel heater, we go straight into the water heater heat exchanger. From the water heater, we go out to the radiators, and then that heats the boat. And then from the radiators, before we go back to the diesel heater, we're gonna hit the engine, and then the generator, and then back to the diesel heater. Simple, right? Figure eight, <laughs> makes total sense. Of course, we're gonna have an electric water heater as well so that we can heat the boat with electric power, but that's something that's gonna come later. And then uh, eventually 
this will just be tied in to the radiator systems and just widen this loop a little bit. And we'll be able to separate these from these for the summer loop. So that's the, the bit that I kind of need to talk with Joel here about. And this one's going to be for this one? These are um, the yeah, two? so with the radiators, you can just tie this into the radiators. And then I'll have four-way valves here to cut this system, the radiators off from this whole system. So that in the summertime, this system just becomes a giant water heater. And the electric setup is just for cooling the boat, air-conditioned style. Okay. So really, we can get a lot of that piped in just with some... Yeah, just some few, a little run to the hardware store and we're kind yeah, of set. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. All right. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Okay. You know, groceries these days are getting so expensive. You just get one bag of groceries. This is $220 for this bag of, not groceries, it's plumbing bits, but still, my God, it's getting pricey around here. Done. Yep. Well, until the next hardware, eh? unless until we get to the next hardware store run. <laughs> That's a little sweaty. That's a start. So this is a huge step. We've got the engine now fully connected to the hydronic system. It's got its own expansion tank, which is now higher than everything else. So that's great. Um, the heat exchangers are all run through on the hydronic side. And the only thing we haven't fully plumbed in is literally we ran out of uh, fittings. But uh, we've got the diesel heater connected. And then I still need to get a pressure control valve, a temperature gauge, a fill point, And we're going to tap all that in somewhere up there. Oh, and an expansion tank, you said, right? Yeah. Expansion tank because of the thermal bleeder expansion. Valve. Bleeder valve. You can get an auto one or just do it with a... Right. I mean, if you're not putting, introducing new water in or coolant a lot, then uh, auto air vent is necessary, really. Yeah. That's, that's when you get um, oxygen in your lines is when you introduce water. Rod, water, okay. Put it at eye level. The, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can see it coming out. Oh like yeah. Close. Yeah. Only when it's under pressure. I don't know if you're picking this up, but uh, Joel's a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a great sense of humor. Anyway, yeah, I'd love to coming. see it. Mm -hmm. One of these days I'm gonna take him seriously and really hurt myself. Welcome back. We are gonna do some beam scarfs this time. Now, I've done beam scarfs quite a lot on this boat. Um, so there's lots of different ways I've done it. Sometimes rushed, or this time less so. But I have these holes in my deck and they're mainly contributing by one beam, two beam, three beam. And all three of them need to be scarfed and molded to that beam shelf. So I've got some sanding, I've got some cutting to do, and I think this time we're gonna do kind of a stepped scarf like we were originally doing at the start. Hopefully it makes for a better, stronger scarf for this particular application. And uh, yeah, hopefully a little bit smoother because the previous ones are gonna take some grinding from the inside, which is gonna be quite unpleasant to fix. But yeah, I need to get this deck on and glassed. <laughs>
god, it's gonna come right my way. Oh, that would be so cool. Okay, when I first got here, it was like 600 meters, 500 meters away, something like that. Now they're only like 200 meters off. Oh my god. I've been seeing humpbacks all month coming out here at sunset. Today, it's a chainsaw. Look at his fin, man. He is huge. God. This is so cool. This is the first orcas I've gotten yet. Been out here for humpbacks all month. Oh my god, and they're just swimming straight at me. This is amazing. Amazing. This is Chainsaw and his mother. They're both quite famous resident orcas here on the west coast. It was really cool to get some time to Spend with them by myself, the only boat out here, having a good look at them. And they had a good look at me too. It was kind of cool to see them come up close, check me out, and then head on south. It's a really great way to cap off a busy week of boat work without really getting anything completely done. But, you know, the boat is just a series of small tasks and each one you scratch off gets you that much closer to sailing around the world. One day I'll look back and I won't remember all these work days, but I'll sure remember meeting Chainsaw. See you guys next week.